So <clears throat> when starting a business, sometimes it becomes very tricky, very tedious. And some people lose hope along the way. But um, most people, we have different classifications of uh, people. We have those people who start business full time. We have others who decide to do business part time as a way of getting extra income. As that is the case, then we have some various factors that one needs to consider when starting a small, medium enterprise. And one of the factors is a business plan. So you need to have a business plan. And this business plan basically gives you the direction of what you need to do for you to start that business. It is like a proposal that you have to make so that you are selling your ideas to the people who might be interested to invest in your business. So business plan is a booklet that you have to come up with, and it gives you some of the strategies that you're going to use. For example, what will be your marketing strategy? What will be your operational strategy? How are you going to raise finances? So all these are normally summarized in a business plan. And if you do not have a business plan, then it means your business is likely to fail in the early stages of starting that business. Then the other thing that you need to consider is target consumers. Who are you targeting for your business? We have different businesses that you can engage in. And remember, each business has its own customers. Are you targeting the youth? Are you targeting the old people? Are you targeting the women? So you need to understand what are you going to target in your business? For example, if you're starting a pork business, are you targeting Christians or are you targeting Muslims? Remember, if you are starting a pork business, Muslims never take pork. So your, own, your target will be basically the Christians eh? and the non-religious people. Then we are looking at funds. Remember, funds are very critical for the survival of the business. And funds here, we are saying it is the capital that you require to start the business. And the capital can be your own savings, or sometimes you can borrow to start a business. But it's not always recommended for one to borrow to start a business in the early stages of the business. So you need to come up with the ways on how you can raise the funds. And remember, the early stages of starting a business are very, very tedious. You require a lot of investment. You need to put a lot of efforts in that business so that the business can grow and survive on its own. Remember, you've not even uh, broken the even of that business. So you need to put a lot of funds. You need to put a lot of funds in marketing, put a lot of funds in inventory, so that people will know what you're doing in the business and it will become easier for you. Once the business grows, then customers know your business and you can start making profits. The other critical factor that we can look at is competition. And competition, we are saying, remember you are not alone in that business. We have other key players in the business. Look at an example where once, once you start an impressor business, we have different customers. We have different um, uh, competitors who have already started that business. So you need to create a niche for yourself so that in the event you enter that market, you already know what your customers require. So that at the end of the day, you become better than your competitors. And remember, competitors are very critical for any businesses because they shape what businesses are going to do. In the event the one wants to overprice, competition will reduce the prices automatically. Look at a scenario where we have different firms. In the event you feel not satisfied with one competitor, you automatically go to the next competitor who you are going to buy. So competition creates alternative for customers. So you need to up your, your game. 
And that is why look at firms like Safaricom. They have still remained to be market leaders. The one, one of the reasons is uh, continuous improvement of their products. And they always do research on their customers. They want to give the customers the best. And that is why we have the Fleezers, we have the Empezas, and we have other products that they offer. Then you also get bonga points as a way of locking the customer so that in the event a customer feels like he or she wants to shift from that product, they will always remember the points that they get and they are able to redeem the points. Then the other thing is passion and attitude. Remember they said attitude is very critical in your business. How you treat your customers, don't give your customers attitude because the moment you give the customers that attitude, they will always run away from your organization. They will always look for where they are considered or where they feel they are given the best service. Be empathetic when you're treating your customers. Always be in the customer's shoes. Listen to your customers. What do the customers want? And remember, when you listen to your customers, you will always get to learn more of what the customer really wants. Then always have passion for what you're doing. If you do something without passion, then it means at the end of the day, in the event you get some few challenges, you will always lose hope and close even the business. So passion also is very, very important. For example, once you finish uh, this uh, course, you can decide to open your own farm where with the knowledge that you have gotten in class and the experience that you have in supply chain, you can become a consultant because of the passion that is within you. So you can look at business planning. And you're saying you need to gather a lot of details before you even start your business. For example, you are looking at the size and form of your business. How do you want your business to look like? How many employees are you going to employ in your business? How many target customers are you going to, to look at? You also need to look at issues like vendor management. How are you going to manage your vendors? Are you going to pay them cash or you are going to negotiate some terms so that they can bring those items to you on credit. Then you're also looking at customer service. And remember customer service is very critical. Remember, we always consider customers as the king. So in the event you don't treat your customers well, I, I'm telling you, they will run away. And losing one customer is very, very difficult. Because once you lose one customer, you can you can take a very long time to get another customer. Because one customer can tell other 10 customers, and these might bring issues at the end of the day. And one of the factors that have led to most businesses failing is the issue of customer service. Customer service. How employees treat their customers. The attitude that the employees have. And remember, if you do not uh, motivate those employees, they will always make sure that as much as they are going down, they will go down with the organization. Then how then do you hire employees? Remember, this is a small business and it is a business that you want it to grow. Make sure you hire employees who are well versed with what you, are, you want to bring on board. They are well versed with your idea. Try to share your idea with your employees so that your employees will be part of your objective or goal or your vision as an individual or as a group. Then uh, issues of warranty, when you are buying new equipment, it is very important to get some warranties so that in the event the equipment fail, they can always uh, uh, exchange that equipment or they can do some repairs for that equipment and many other factors. So business planning, the business plan forces the entrepreneur to prepare in advance. So you are supposed to prepare in advance so that you know the nitty gritties of the business. In the event something happens, 
you already have a contingency plan or a plan B about something that is going to happen. The other thing is that a business plan gives you the direction or where you want the company to go. So direction is very important because it aligns you with the, your future goals, both in the short term and in the long term. Then it also explains what the goals are. So you need to understand what your goals are. What do you want to achieve? What are you aiming for at the end of the day? If you start a cyber cafe, what are you aiming for in the long run? Then where it wants to be, where does that cyber want to be in the next like five years? Do you want to still be in the cyber business or you want to diversify your business so that you do other activities that will um, substitute your income? Remember, it is always good to uh, diversify your business so that in the event one business, uh, one idea fails, you already have another idea in place. Then uh, where uh, and how it's going to get there. So you need to have a mission statement and some of the goals or objectives or the core values that will drive you toward achieving your, your business goals. And this will keep you on track. Every day you remember your vision, you remember your mission, then you start working, you, you, you continue working hard for that same goal. The plan is a proof that necessary research has been performed. So remember, you need to do research before you start any business. Do a lot of research. And research here helps you to gather a lot of information about different businesses, similar businesses that have been started before, and how are the challenges? What did you do? What were some of the solutions that you brought on board? In the event this happens, how are you going to tackle it, and et cetera. Then, um, and that business opportunity. Remember, the plan also gives you different opportunities. You can tap on new markets. You can tap on new customers. So you need to understand all those about opportunities and how you can capitalize on those opportunities. The business plan also serves to attract lenders and investors. One of the main focus of having a business plan is to be able to woo investors to invest in your business so that they can bring money to your idea and you can actualize your idea. And there's this uh, program that was on TV. It was called KCB Lions, if you can remember. Then also we had the, the other one called Shark Tank. You can uh, go there and give a presentation on your idea. If the investors like it, they will always give you some capital to kickstart your idea. So this can only be made possible if you have a business place plan in place. A business plan has to pass three tests with lenders and investors. These are the reality tests. So they need to understand in real sense, in the reality, what is the business going to offer? What are some of the solutions that the business is going to offer in reality, not in paper? Then you have the competitive test. Here we are looking at, in the event we have competitors, how will the business maneuver and outdo the competitors? And remember, the business is dynamic and the business keeps on changing. So how are you going to change with the change in business? Because new players will be coming in, new companies, new ideas. How are you going to tackle some of these ideas? Then the other one is value test. At the end of the day, is the business going to impact the customers in any way? What is the value at the end of the day? And the value also can be looked at in two ways. What are the investors going to get in terms of value when they invest in your business? And at the same time, they will also look at the value in terms of the customers that you are going to, to serve. Then um, another thing that is very critical is uh, issues of uh, credit and capitalization. So you need to understand 
how are you going to get credit? Remember, most businesses survive on credit outside here. So you need to come up with ways of negotiating the best in terms of uh, credit facilities from your lenders or from your investors or even from your um, partners. It's very, very important. And always need and ensure that you have enough so that in the event you start your business, give your, your business at least six months to see how the business goes. After six months, you can either know whether a business is going to do well or the business is going to, to fail. Then the other thing is on shared responsibility. For example, if you start a partnership today, you need to share some responsibility so that people know what they're supposed to do. And remember the partners are the agents of that business. They are the ones who are going to market your business. They are the ones who are going to advocate and look for customers, look for superior products for your business. And they need to work hand in hand. And every partner or every investor is accountable for their actions. In that, in the event you get losses, remember you are sharing the losses, all of you. In the event you get profits, the profits will be shared among the shareholders or the partners in that business. Therefore, in, the, in that sense, we are saying we need to have teamwork and synergy. We need to work towards a common goal as a business. Failure to do that, it means the business will automatically fail and you will not like, like it. Then we are talking about uh, uh, synergy to achieve the set goals. So you need to work in synergy or in, in, in teams. What is synergy? Yes. Well, synergy is um, whatever you bring up, um, different people, uh, whatever, uh, which word did I use? The, I would call it the expertise. It could be you have information, expertise, okay. uh, whatever you have that can add value that you bring into a pool if you're a team of people. Uh, yeah and you bring it up together to work for the good, that is the synergy. Okay. You're pulling up your efforts together. Okay. So let's look at the sources of business financing. And when you look at sources of business financing, we are saying we have internal sources and we have external sources. But before we look at, uh, we jump into that, you need to understand what we call equity capital. This represents the personal investments of the owner in a business where the investor assumes the primary risk of losing their funds if the business fails. So equity capital is very, very important. As an owner of the business, always ensure that you have your own money in place so that in the event you don't get investors, you already have the capital in, in place to kickstart your idea. And uh, this form has an advantage since it does not have to be repaid as a loan. So equity capital is like the owner's personal investments. So you need not to, to return in terms of, of loan. Let's uh, look at the internal sources of funding. One of the internal sources of funding is personal source. And personal source, we are saying these are personal savings and uh, maybe the assets that you have acquired over the years. For example, if you start, you want to start a, a, a barber shop, for example, maybe you have some savings that you have or you had already had, had before. So this saving is what you will now use to start your business. You can also decide to get money from friends and family members. This is also a very common way of kickstarting your business. We have some friends who can really support you when you want to start your own business. And we also have some family members who feel that they can boost your investment so that you can start your business. Then we can look at private investors and partners. Uh, private investors are people who are interested in that business that you want to start. 
and they'll always pump funds for that, that purpose. And partners are people who come with their own share of um, capital so that you can combine your efforts together for purposes of kickstarting your idea. Then we also have what is called the share capital, share capital. And this share capital is normally invested by the founder. The founding entrepreneur may decide to invest in share capital of a company founded for the purpose of forming a, a startup. So you can decide to sell your shares so that people can buy your shares of the company and be part of the company. So that at least at the end of the year, in the event you get some profits, you can always share the profits among the shareholders. Then you also have angels investors. Angels investors are people who are very wealthy and these people have a lot of money and they think or they don't know how to use that money or they, they are trying to invest on a business but they do not have an idea. So they can decide because of the money that they have, they can always uh, maybe give you the money, do the business and uh, when the business gets profits, then they can share the profits. So we are saying angel investors are ready to risk their money for purposes of investing in your small business. And once the business picks, they will always be the biggest beneficiaries of that business. Let's look at the external sources. We are saying one of the external sources that we have is bank loan. So you can decide to borrow a loan from a bank. And remember, a bank loan is different from a bank overdraft. This is because a bank loan takes a longer time when you're paying. Uh, it might take even um, more than five to six years or even 10 years. And when you are asking for a bank loan, they always ask you to give what is called a collateral. So that in the event you don't pay the loan, the collateral will always take shape. And normally collaterals, they like asking for um, title deeds or car logbooks and what have you. Bank overdraft is also another form of an external source. And bank overdraft normally is for a shorter period of time where you can pay within a month or within three months. In the event you feel you have some issues with cash flows, you can always go to the bank and they'll give you a bank overdraft. Then we have lease and uh, lease, lease, lease. Lease is another form of um, a source of funding where you can decide to lease an asset for a very long time, maybe 10 years. And after maybe three years, you can always review the terms of your lease and remember lease always uh, when you finish the lease period the, the property or the asset goes back to to the owner uh, leasing is one of the feasible uh, feasible for tangible goods such as vehicles equipment and other similar items so you can either lease uh, land you can lease these assets assets most of the time huh? Then we have trade credits. Trade credits is normally given by suppliers where they can give you products. You sell those products. Once you sell the products, then later they can come and collect the money. And this is very common in even supermarkets where they are given trade credit, uh, credits, these small supermarkets. And the main focus is to support the business. So that once the business grows, then it becomes good for all the partners in that business or the stakeholders in that business. Then we have debt capital as a source of financing. This refers to where the business owner has borrowed and must repay with interest. So debt capital you borrow, and at the end of the day, you also add some interest on top of what you've borrowed. The challenge is that the lender charges them a higher interest rate after borrowing. And this is common with banks. 
banks can give you loans, but their interest rate is very, very high, more than 12% of interest on borrowing. But when you look at uh, these circles that have come in nowadays, they charge 12% on reducing balance. So at the end of the year, you find that your interest is not that much compared to what the banks are doing. But uh, we have some advantages of debt financing. Debt financing allows a business to leverage a small amount of capital to create growth. So in the event you have a less capital amount, you can always get maybe four or five times uh, the amount that you want. And this is a way of trying to leverage your business or trying to increase your capital so that you can invest in bigger projects. Debt payments are generally tax deductible. So sometimes you they will reduce taxes when you borrow and they will give you what is called tax relief. Tax relief. A company retains all ownership and control. So in the event you borrow the money, the money is yours. You can use it how you want to use it. It doesn't matter, provided you pay their interest and you pay their money. They have no problem with you. Debt financing is often less costly than equity financing. So it's cost less costly compared to equity financing. So what are the disadvantages? Disadvantages. Interest must be paid to the lender. You have to pay interest, regardless of who you are in the industry. Payment on debt must be more regardless of the business revenue. And we are saying debt financing can be risky for businesses with inconsistent cash flow. <clears throat> so if your cash flow is not consistent, then debt financing is not for you because they need to see the pattern of cash inflows before they can give you a loan for your business. Then this takes us to another subtopic, which is the contribution of small and medium enterprises to the economy. Remember we said more than 50% of businesses fall under the small and medium enterprises. And we classified the small and medium enterprises and we said we have micro enterprises, we have uh, small enterprises and we have medium enterprises. So um, they play a very vital role in the economy of any country, even if it is a developing country or these other countries, small businesses play a very critical role. And that is why the, the government always comes up with policies to support some of these small businesses a good business environment so that they are not driven out of businesses. So what are some of the benefits of contribution? The first contribution is in terms of productivity. And we are saying some of these businesses have increased productivity in a given country. Look at small businesses in Kenya, for example. They have created a lot of productivity because when they pull those resources together, they move the economy and the economy works well for the country. Then the other thing is job creation. Job creation. Most people have been employed using these uh, small medium enterprises and it is a source of employment for many citizens of this country. Then the other thing is exporting participation, exporting participation. Exporting, we are saying most uh, small businesses have realized that they can tap to other markets and other markets abroad. Therefore, they have been forced to start exporting what they produce to other markets so that they can increase their revenue, they can increase their market shares and other issues. And the other one is the aid fair income distribution. So once you engage yourself in such businesses, you will be able to increase your income, increase your income. 
Then we also have other specific contributions. We are saying since small medium enterprises have low risk factor, a large number of workers will be able to use more resources. So you can use more resources and you can maximize your potential with the resources that are already available. Then we are saying small units may have higher allocation efficiency because they can use resources to their full extent without wasting any. Remember, these are small businesses and they take into account every resource that they consume so that they don't waste those resources. Then we are saying a greater pool of trained and potential business people may be able to find work in small sectors so people can be able to get employment in this sector. Then the other thing is that they can help to alleviate the problem of paying accounts in balance by promoting exports. So they can promote the balance of trade by exporting more of the produce that we get locally. Then while large scale industries are projected to exacerbate income inequity and wealth concentration, small medium enterprise anticipate to produce a broader distribution of income and wealth. So they distribute income and, and wealth. And at the end of the day, we get value added uh, product in the marketplace, which increases the GDP or the gross domestic product.